Uh, very funny guy, been doing this for a long time, up and down the roads, uh, touring all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Steve Okada! Thanks a lot. Thanks everyone for coming out. Uh, my name is Steve O'Connell. Stephen Patrick O'Connell. I'm Irish Catholic, which basically means I feel guilty for shit I haven't even done yet. You gotta be Catholic to understand that, right? I almost didn't make it here tonight. Um, I'm one of those guys where like I am never hardly ever late for anything, but I'm always running behind. So I'm always playing catch up and that drives my wife crazy. And we were speeding to get here, and I was speeding into town, and I got pulled over by a Buffalo cop. And is it me, or did they take their job a little bit too serious? I could tell he was pissed off when we got out of the car, and I thought, well, if I make him laugh, maybe he won't write me a ticket. And he walked up to my car, and he pointed at his finger at him, and he said, sir, you better have a darn good reason for going 60 and 30. And I looked right up at him, and I said, I do, officer. There was a cop chasing me. <laughs> he didn't think it was funny, okay? You don't want to do that shit, okay? Because apparently in Buffalo, they can actually strip search you for being a wise ass. I didn't realize they could do it on the side of the road. Or frankly, that I'd enjoy it quite so much. I'm speeding when I'm leaving tonight, I don't care. But I'm not doing comedy trying to make people laugh. Um, I actually have kind of a part-time job. I spend a lot of time driving out in the country. Uh, not too long ago, I was driving out near um, the Warsaw, Wales area there. And you know, and then apparently it was manure season. And I came around the corner, and a farmer was on his tractor, and he was pulling the manure spreader. And I know he saw him because he fucking looked right at me. And he pulled right out the road in front of me, and that's when I noticed that the wheel in the back of the manure spreader was still spinning around. There was shit flying everywhere. And unfortunately for me, I always drive with the windows open. And I got hit right in the side of the face by what I can only describe as like a, a semi-solid shitsicle. And I knocked my glasses all askew. I couldn't see where I was going. I'm mean, like driving all radically and shit. I got pulled over by a cop. And I got arrested for driving while shit faced. <laughs> and it was my second offense, so it's a felony. You know? I gotta have an Amish guy drive me to work now. Thanks for that. I left here on Tuesday. about, you know, the Fifty Shades of Grey books. Um, my wife read all those books. I came home one day and she met me at the door with a gleam in her eye. And she didn't say a word. She just grabbed me by the hand and she led me upstairs towards the bedroom. And on the way up the stairs I'm thinking, holy shit, it's not even dark out. <laughs> and it's not my birthday. Right? So I get upstairs and she opens up the bedroom door and I look inside and I see like four gray silk neckties on the bedpost. And I knew a little bit about what these books were about and I thought, holy shit, she wants me to tie her to the bed and do stuff to it. That's not what she wanted. She wanted to tie me to the bed hanging. And I gotta tell you, you gotta have a lot of trust in a person <laughs> to let them tie you to the bed naked. Plus, you gotta have a good fucking memory, because you gotta remember your safe word. Right? And because you can't just say, okay, you know, just tie one hand and one leg. You gotta pretty much go all in, right? So I let her tie me to the bed naked, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. I started feeling kind of frisky. But it didn't really work out the way I had hoped. Because she picked my pants up off the floor. She took my wallet, took all my money, took my credit cards, took the only car that was paid for, went to the bank, wiped out our accounts. I haven't seen that bitch since. <laughs> and that's not even the worst part, okay? The worst part is she tied a damn good knot. Right? <laughs> kind of like one of them China. 
Chinese finger poles, you know, the harder you struggle, the tighter they get. I was like stuck to this bed for like hours. It was in the summertime. I'm dying of thirst. I'm getting weaker and weaker. And I'm like, help me, help me. Finally, my next door neighbor, the widow Jenkins, was 85. She's the one who rescued me. I looked up, there she was in the doorway. She looked like an angel of mercy. I was like, oh my God, Mrs. Jenkins, would you please untie me? And she looked at me and she smiled and she said, no. Because <laughs> apparently she had read the book too. I don't want to get graphic with you. All I'm going to say is I had to do some shit. To see okay. But it worked out okay because we dated for a while. <laughs> My wife actually came back because that whole $400 life savings didn't really last. <laughs> uh, we've actually been married for 34 years. She's sitting in the back. Uh, My wife got 34 years. It's going to be 35 July in July. And we have six kids. Okay, six kids, and I'm 59, I have teenagers in my house, because it took us forever to get pregnant, and all of a sudden, I mean, we had stuff like, you know, we went on great vacations and everything, and the doctor said nothing was wrong with us, and we, and finally, for about 10 years, every year and a half, a miniature human being came shooting out of her vagina. We have six girls in my house. Six! Between the ages of 13 and 21. And we only have one bathroom, okay? So I, yeah, one bathroom. So I got to get up like really early in the morning to get in there. And not too long ago, I got up like 5 o'clock. I run into the bathroom and I made a mistake. I didn't turn the light on. And I took out my toothbrush and my toothpaste and I started brushing my teeth. And all of a sudden, I hope this never happens to you guys. Be careful. All of a sudden, my gums started like tingling and kind of burning and shit. And I turned the light on and I looked at the tube of what I thought was toothpaste. And that's when I discovered that I had just brushed my teeth with badges so. I know I just alienated all the ladies in the audience here, okay? Now you're probably scratching and shit. You're not looking at each other. Okay. But I gotta tell you, I don't want to know. In case you guys don't know, badges so is for women who are suffering from vaginitis. Personally, I don't want to know what vaginitis is, and I certainly don't want to know who my house is suffering from. But I gotta tell you, since I've been using it on a regular basis, my gums have never been in better shape. My dentist thinks I'm flossing now. You know, it's great. It's great. I just, as I said, I just turned actually 59 years old last week. And um, when you're 50, when you turn over 50, you gotta go to the doctor all the time when you're a guy, right? And they're always sticking something up your ass, right? They don't even buy you a drink first, you know? <laughs> they're sticking something up your ass, and they always gotta check out your dick. And I don't care what you go there for. I went there about three months ago, I had bronchitis. I get it once a year, I know what the hell it is. I said, Doc, I got bronchitis. He said, Steve, that's okay, we gotta see your dick. Right, and guys, what do they do when they gotta see your dick, right? They put you in the most freezing fucking cold room in the plant. Right, there's like icicles hanging off of there and shit, right? And I don't have to explain to you what happens to us when we, even minor temperature fluctuation in our private parts, right? We're talking some serious tournament here, right? And they gotta send a woman in there to check you out, okay? You know they're coming. And they don't just send one anymore, they send two. They do. For sexual harassment, they send two. And I gotta tell you, I don't think they even fucking work there. <laughs> they look like the women that were in the audience, right out there in the waiting room. Because they don't act professional. They come in and they're like giggling and shit. And before they come to see you, guys, unless you're like super dick, you're probably doing the same shit I am. You're like spanking your shit around. Right? Come on, you do that. Like, come on, perk up a little bit. We got company coming, right? And then they come in and they're like chuckling and stuff, and they go outside and you hear them say shit like, oh, apparently Mr. O'Connell thought this was the pediatric work. I'm like, fuck you! And they make you wear those hospital gowns, right? I hate those, right? The people who work there cut the strings on those things so you can't tie them fuckers, right? You bend over and they fall off, you're naked. But they do let you wear your socks because apparently they feel like if perfect strangers were to see your feet, you'd be really fucking bad. And I decided not too long ago, I am not going 
to wear those hospital gowns anymore. I'm just going to be fucking naked. And I went to the doctor. They put me in this little room with this funny looking chair. And I took off all my clothes. Right? And I sat there in all my glory. I'm taking control, right? The doctor comes in. And she sees me. And she starts screaming. And she runs out of the room. And a few minutes later, the police show up. And they arrest me. Because apparently, you're not allowed to be naked at the eye doctor. <laughs> and now I can't live near a playground or a school. This really sucks, you know. People ask me all the time, you know, like, Steve, you know, I know you've been married for a long time. What's your secret? You know, you have a secret, and I'm going to tell you what it is. It's communication. Okay, you got to be able to talk. Good or bad, you got to be able to talk, right? I came home not too long ago. My wife was pretty quiet, which is unusual for her. I said, honey, what's going on? And she said, well, honey, you got to talk. And she's too old to get pregnant now, so I was kind of, you know, glad about that. And I said, well, what is it? And she said, well, I don't want to embarrass you. Uh, I want to be supportive. I love you and everything. But i got to tell you, the sex is getting a little boring. We need to spice that up. You know, maybe we can buy, like, some love toys or something. And a lot of guys would probably go out and buy, like, Mr. Wiggly or one of them Kickstart and Panasonic. <laughs> but I like to think outside the box, so to speak. And I went out and bought a taser. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't tell her about it because I wanted it to be a surprise. <laughs> and one day we were going at it at the most opportune moment. I reached down by the side of the bed and I shot her right in the neck. Oh my gosh, you could have seen her. Shit was flying, spit was flying, hair was flying. She was pretty much going into convulsions. And I'm like, that's right, baby, I'm still a scud muffin. <laughs> Before I go, guys, I gotta give you some advice. And this is very important. You need to write this shit down. Before you run out and buy the taser, you want to make sure that when you actually apply the taser, that there is no penetration. Because if there is, as any good electrician will tell you, you've completed the circuit. And become part of I know, I know, my wife and I did that. We got stuck together for like 20 minutes. <laughs> we both had to have hip replacement surgery. Do I get time for one more or no? Am I going? Okay. I, I, I got one more thing I want to tell you. Um, it's been my experience, and, I, and guys and girls pick me up on this. You know it's true. It's been my experience that after sex, women always complain about ending up in a wet spot. Right? They do. I mean, one minute they are jumping up and down on you, smacking you with a riding crop, saying, bring me home, big boy. And then when it's all over, they're all disgusted with you. And you're like, oh my God, you pig. It's fucking everywhere. It's in my hair. It's between my toes. And how did it get so fucking cold? You know what I mean? Right? And then, for some reason, you ladies have to clean up right away. Right? You always complain that guys don't like to cuddle. We like to cuddle, but by the time you're done cleaning all that shit up, we are unconscious. <laughs> right? We're unconscious, and the mistake that some rookies will make is using a tissue, don't use a tissue. If you stick a tissue on your dick, like the ice cream on or the vagina, I'm sure, if you stick a tissue on your dick, there's a chemical reaction that takes place. And that shit turns into like paper mache. You can't get that shit off. Right? I'm like, honey, you want another swim?